Good morning, everyone. So good to see you in the house of our Lord today. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. As you know, we have the lighting of our candles for our traditional worship service, and that reflects the light of Christ. The symbolism is all about Jesus' presence, the light of the Lord. And of course, with the light inside of us, you are the light of this world because Christ lives within you. Can we all say amen? Amen. amen. Our prelude today is titled, Lord, You Give the Great Commission. Beautiful, Miss Laurie. I'm going to ask Brother Ken if he'll make his way forward for our invocation, Ken. Oh, you're Holly. You don't look like Ken. It just dawned on me when I saw that that I saw that in my phone message. Holly's coming. As you know, our Stephen ministers and Stephen leaders give us our invocation on the second Sunday of each month. And we have a video that we're actually going to show after the welcome and announcements. But I want to remind everybody we have a new bulletin board and Holly's here afterwards and others like Brother Ken and other Stephen ministers. If any of you'd like to chat with them, that would be great. Holly? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have come here to praise you and thank you. At this time of the year, we give thanks for all our many blessings that you have given us. Father, there are so many that need you. Help us to serve them as you have served us. John 3.16, Jesus said, You so loved the world that you sacrificed your son. Help us to give to others as you have given to us. And now, Father, open our minds for Pastor Eddie's message. Amen. Could I have a minute? I, I want to talk about Stephen ministers. I am a Stephen minister, and it is the most rewarding thing I have ever done in my life. And I would really, really encourage any of you who are thinking about it to come and get information and also if you know anyone that just needs someone to talk to there are many of us and we really really love helping thank you good morning do we have any guests this morning that want to be acknowledged I hear somebody pointing. Bonnie's here. Could you? <laughs> Welcome. You again. I'm sorry. I'd like to uh, introduce to you my beautiful number one, wonderfully wise daughter, Kelly Chambers, War Eagle. <laughs> Kelly, may you be blessed. <laughs> the Second Life Thrift Shop will be open this week, and there will be no donations at this time. And I am not going to mention this again until there's a change. So 
If anyone who does not get the newsletter emailed to them, there are printed copies on the round table, or at least there were when I came in this morning. Pastor says you can leave candy the whole month of October for trunk or treat, which will be October the 31st. And you need to sign up to decorate your trunk and hand out the candy. The sign-up sheet is at the welcome desk with all the information you will need. Today, Scouts are selling popcorn after the services in the Narthex, and the United Methodist women have the sheets for the Christmas wreath and, wreaths and greens there also. On Wednesday, October the 13th at 2 p.m. is the Mission Committee meeting in Friendship Hall. On Thursday the 14th at 4.30, the movie The Chosen will be shown in Friendship Hall with popcorn and pizza. All are welcome. Next Sunday, the 14th, at 4 p.m. is our charge conference, which will be in Homosassa United Methodist Church. All officers and chairmen and laity should attend. Saturday, October the 23rd, the United Methodist men will have a dinner kind of dance and musical program by the one-man band at the American Legion Hall. Now, some have, several have told me it will be really good, so I assume it will. Even somebody thought I would go and dance. Ha. Huh. <laughs> Finally, on October the 29th and the 30th, from 8.30, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. will be the United Methodist Women's Flea Market and Bake Sale. Bring in treasures for the sale beginning Monday, October the 18th at 3 p.m. No televisions, computers, printers, clothes, or shop, sharp objects. Any question, call Jan Rowe or Barbara Keller. For baked goods, call Roxanne Barnes. Um, we have a little bit of an announcement. I would like to make an announcement about the Christmas cantata. And I know it's just October. We haven't even had Halloween yet. But on uh, December the 12th is the Christmas cantata. And I know some, I'm hoping that there are some of you maybe who don't want to commit to the choir for uh, every Sunday, but maybe you would like to sing with the choir for the Christmas cantata. So if you would like to do that, we would welcome you to come to choir practice on Wednesday nights. And the first part of our practice will be working on our getting ready for Sunday, but the second half, we will work on Christmas music. So if you would like to come at 645 to work on Christmas music and sing with the cantata on the 12th of December, we would love to have you. And so I hope to see some faces there come Wednesday night. We're now going to have our Stephen video. You know, February the 6th, 1991, is a day that I'll never forget. It's the date when I discovered our 18-year-old son, Denny, had died in his sleep. My world was turned upside down. It was me and my, my whole family struggled for years to find a, a new normal. And to be honest, my life was a mess as I struggled with my anger toward God and my feelings of total despair. People would often come to me and ask me uh, how my wife Beulah and Andy were doing. And I wondered when someone would come and ask how I was doing. And then one day it happened. Ed Downs came to me and said, Dennis, I want to meet you at Jumpin' Catfish. And so we met there. And after we had ordered our food, he turned, looked me straight in the eye, and he said, now, Dennis, I want to know how you're doing. You know, I can still remember the kindness in his eyes when he showed a sincere interest in me and what I was going through. And across the years, I've come to realize how important it is to have someone to journey with us when we go through the valleys and the tough times. And as pastors here at the church, we have people coming in nearly every day with stories that can break your heart people who have just received the diagnosis of cancer, stories of unemployment, sadness because a, a loved one has died. Uh, we hear stories of divorce and we see the pain on the faces of those who have been rejected by someone who once loved them. 
Well, the list goes on and on. And sometimes as pastors, we feel like firemen, just running from one fire to another. To be honest, we need help with dealing with some of the tough things that life throws at us. However, I, I often hear people say, I want to help, but I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Uh, we have a wonderful ministry here at the church called the Stephen Ministry. And in this ministry, uh, Stephen Ministry is matched up one-to-one, -one, a man with a man, a woman with a woman. And the Stephen Ministry is given 50 hours of training, and then we commission them, and then we assign them to one of these hurting people. And you meet with them uh, at least an hour a week. We provide excellent training so that you know how to be a good listener and you know how to deal with the grief of the person that you're with. You learn what to say and what not to say. Stephen ministers are not therapists, but they know how to be fully present with people in a confidential way. Across the years, I've noticed that those people who have gone through the hard places, they're the ones who are best able to help those who are going through them now. So if you've been wounded by some of the tragedies of life, I hope that you will consider taking this training so that you too can be a part of this Stephen ministry team and that you too can become a wounded healer. I encourage you to stop by the table, pick up that packet, talk to one of our Stephen ministers, and then pray about this matter. This may be just the ministry that you've been looking for. Can we all say amen? amen? That is one of the great ministries of our church, and we have that same table and the packets there and folks to share with you. I received a call this last week from a, a new family in our community uh, taking care of their elderly parents. And so when I took communion there, I picked up that the, a Stephen minister would be perfect for that setting. So I talked to them about it, and they're very open, and we'll be connecting with them. I agree with that pastor. You know, uh, there is so many needs. We need uh, folks to, to step up to the plate and take this training and be involved with us as the, as the next couple of years go by. So if the, you're feeling a tug at your heart at all, I would encourage you to do that. We start our first uh, meeting in the first Monday of November, and we're going to be in... Uh, uh, those of us that are old timers are going to be retrained again. So you have to put up with us, your pastor and all the others. Uh, and it'll be, uh, uh, uh evening, uh, probably Mondays that may not fit for you, but that's probably where we're going to go for the next training, but please pray about it. And like Holly said, it's just an amazing ministry. Amen. Uh, this time you may remain seated. The choir is going to lead us in our call to worship, and then we'll have our opening hymn of praise. stand and join me this morning as we sing our hymn of praise. Uh, the words will be on the screen, but if you would like to use your hymnals, it is on page 399, and we'll be singing all three verses of Take My Life and Let It Be.
Honey will lead us in our responsive reading. Our Psalter this morning comes from Psalm 22, 1 through 5. It's on page 752, and we're doing the second response. Join the choir. God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but find no rest. Yet you, the praise of Israel, are enthroned in holiness. In you our forebears trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified dead, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated. Please take your bulletin, if you will, and turn it over for our prayer concerns uh, that we have. I see Karen, you and your mother back there, Marion, and I'm glad. Marion, we've been praying for you and so glad that you're doing okay. Blessings. Amen. Can we all say amen? Amen. 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 Bob Gunby is also home. Uh, he has been in a rehab. His dear bride was here at the eight o'clock service. We have three right now on hospice, and these are areas like this that a Stephen minister is absolutely amazing. Walter Davis, Alice Campbell, and Nancy Dodds are all now on hospice at their homes or in uh, rehabilitation centers. Jim Kelly from the 930 uh, worship team had surgery on Friday, and he is at home, been talking back and forth with Jim and he seems to be doing okay. It's going to take a little while for recovery. Uh, we had at the 930 service Linda uh, Bowyer. She's a brand new member, and Linda's cancer has come back. Um, she asked that we be in prayer. I talked to her yesterday on the phone, and she came up and knelt at this altar just a few moments ago, and we've just prayed over her. Um, we just, you know, this is the month that we... Uh, we have the Michelograms, and that's one of our mission areas. And, and so I just, if you would just really add her name to your list. Uh, they have a number of tests. She doesn't know just what all is going to be involved. But she told me yesterday, she said, God brought me through before, and he'll bring me through again. Can you all say amen? amen. That is a beautiful testimony. And then uh, Mary Beckett from our choir called this week and said that uh, lifelong friends... 
Uh, their family had been in a terrible car accident and uh, even a little child had died already and there were some others that were critically ill. So if we can just remember that family that was in the car accident in our prayers, I know that, uh, that they would appreciate it. Mm -hmm. She passed away. Oh, thank you, Mary. I said that her, she herself passed away. So if you can remember the family. What's the family's name, Mary? Mm -hmm. Heckles okay. Heckles? Heckles. Eccles. The Eccles family. Those of you that are taking notes there to, for your prayer chart, Eccles, that's, uh, if you will pray for them. Hold these in your hands, if you will. And if you have individual prayer needs, as Bonnie comes um, at the end of the service, when you drop in your offering, if you haven't already, you can drop those prayer cards in those offering plates, and it goes right on our prayer chain as well. Bonnie? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you this morning in praise and adoration. We come seeking your guidance and your wisdom. We come asking you to strengthen our faith and let us truly feel your grace. Lord, we ask you to be with this country and its leaders. Help to prick their hearts that they may look toward you and making the decisions to lead this country for all of us who are part of this country. Lord, be with our military, our EMTs, our firemen, our policemen, and all of the caregivers. Lord, we know that they are doing a job that is personal for them. They also never know what is going to happen. And we ask for their families to have peace, knowing that they are there because we need them so badly. And yet the family needs them also. So wrap us all in your loving arms and let us feel your peace because it is your peace, it is your understanding that gets us through each day. And Lord, be with our pastor and his family. Help him to look to you for discernment and wisdom, especially in all the craziness that we have. We know that we have no clue what our next steps should be, but we do know that you know exactly where we're going and what we should be doing. And Lord, may each one of us seek your wisdom and your guidance and then listen for the answer that you will give us and even go to your word because there are answers from almost everything in your word, but it does take seeking. Lord, be with all those Pastor Eddie has lifted up on the prayer chain, all those that he listed this morning, all those that have been on the email throughout this week. Lord, help us to remember them in our prayers. Help them to feel our concern so that they know that without a shadow of a doubt they are not alone even though they feel lonely you are always with them be with us throughout this week help us to be all that we can be help us to take those steps you want us to take and Lord, may those who pass, cross our paths see a light and a peace that they don't normally see. And this may urge them to either question or to seek you. We are here for you. You are here for us. We are all your children. 
And now, Lord, we lift to you all of our silent prayers. Lord, we ask all of these things in your son's precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 22. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Word. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud, honor your mother and father. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lacked, he said, go sell everything you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please remain standing, and Miss June will lead us in our second hymn of worship. If you'll join me for our hymn of preparation as we turn, again, if you'd like to use your hymnals, it is on page 540, and we'll be singing first, second, and fifth verses of I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord. You may be seated. I hope, dear friends, that there are some gathered here this day that will be able to join uh, preparing for the cantata. That's always a tremendous uh, moment of worship and celebration in the Advent season, and we are always blessed by this amazing choir.
Can we all say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Thank you, June and Miss Lori. Not heard that selection in a while. I was singing along with them. You probably were as well. Before we jump into the message today, um, Miss Linda Jones asked if I would mention this, and uh, we mentioned it the two earlier services. She and her husband, Johnny, are doing a history wall in the room behind the sanctuary. Some of you may not even know there is a big hallway room behind the sanctuary, and we are doing research. We have uh, already artifacts dating way, way back. The church started in 1885, uh, about a mile north of here near Rockwell Cemetery under some oak trees trees. And then uh, the church, you know, began to progress. And uh, we know that the first church owned by us uh, that was built for us was in 1903. And we have pictures of that church. Some of the actual stained glass are in the stained glass windows out front there. And I need to write that down because when I'm gone, nobody's going to remember that. And uh, so we're needing uh, right now artifacts of old Methodism. So if you have anything or old Christianity, we have a few Bibles back there. One that's 300 years old. Uh, we have a, a 150 year old Bible as well, a communion set over a hundred years old. So if you have anything that's Methodist and ancient, don't look at your spouse. I don't mean it that way. You can't <laughs> drop them off here. But if you have anything like that, call the church office because we want to put it on display. Um, it's just a lot of beautiful work being done back there. Tom Dykstra has done some amazing uh, woodwork. And then when we get finished, we're going to have the whole church be able to parade behind there and look at it. And then maybe when you have more time, you can just go back there. And it's just absolutely fantastic. So I would encourage you to do that. Would you bow with me for just a moment of prayer? Father, thank you again for this beautiful worship service on the second Sunday of October. We ask that you guide us now as we take a few moments and share the word of God. We have truly been in your presence with our liturgy, with our beautiful hymns and prayers and sharing together the holy word. And now as we share a few words in depth of the scriptures, we pray that you speak to our heart as only you can. And may all of God's children say, Amen. Title of the message this morning is to inherit eternal life. Now, every time I talk about inheritance, I think about at least the last six years, my mom and daddy, because it was right at six years ago that they went on to heaven. Many of you remember that. And we were cleaning out the old farmhouse and uh, my sisters and I and mom and daddy from the depression years, they saved everything. And uh, so as I'm cleaning out the cupboards, there's a zillion of those little tomato baskets. Mama would wash them and put them away. You never know when you might need a tomato basket. And then we found tons and tons of the, uh, the little, uh, what do you call them? Twist ties of the bread wrappers. Mama would put them in. Uh, some of you are doing this, aren't you? I can tell that already. She put them into bundles of 25 and 50 and just tons of them under there because you never know when you might need that. And I remember pulling that out with my sisters and some of you have heard me share this and just looking at them and saying, I found my inheritance. <laughs> you know, this is it. This is what I've got for the rest of my life here. Well, the good Lord offers us much more than that. We know that. Every Bible verse is part of his blessing to us, a promise, part of his love letter to us. We know that. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God says, I know the plans I have for you. He's already written them down. He's numbered your days. He said, I know the plans I have for you. They are there to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. Don't you love that? Hope and a future. Uh, yesterday, Bonnie and I had the privilege of representing our church at a memorial service for two wonderful uh, community leaders here in this area for a number of years, Jerry and Marlene. Um, and they worked with the Food for Kids, which we're very active with. They uh, worked with the Bible school program at Romeo Elementary for many years. They're in the prison ministry. They, were, for about 10 years, were leaders in the Christians United in Christ. Just a wonderful couple. And the pastor, as he was sharing, because they died three days apart with, with COVID, 
Um, and I didn't know this till yesterday. Bonnie and I were sitting there. They said that right before they died, they pulled, they were in the same room. And so they put their beds together so they could hold hands. Isn't that amazing? They really were beautiful. And it was a beautiful memorial uh, service uh, for them. But the pastor said that he, his last connection with the wife, and talking about it was close to her going to be with the Lord, she said, I'm scared, but I'm excited also. Now think of that for a moment. I just, when he said that, it just stuck with me. Because we, even though we're Christians and we have faith and we have assurance, there, there's a little fear there because it's the other side. We, we have never been there. So that, that's, that's very real. But to say in those last few moments also that I'm excited because I'm going to be with Jesus, that defines our spiritual inheritance. Can you say amen? amen? Now, the A of our ABCs today is the same as it was last week. If you were here with us here in the sanctuary or maybe online, um, and I'm going to wave at some of those. I was talking to Kathy and Don Bayshore. They're sad today. Their football team lost, you know, they're uh, Penn State fans. I don't know how many of you are big Penn State fans and maybe some of your Iowa fans. There's probably no Alabama fans. They're in uh, sackcloth and ashes today. You know, War Eagles are a little better, you know, and so forth. But uh, I want to say that in that, if you were here last week, the A of our ABCs, I'm not going to put you on the spot. So I don't want to give you a pop quiz, but it was the word ask. It was the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, asking Jesus and trying to trick him up. Today's passage that we have in our lectionary reading, you have a young, rich ruler asking Jesus questions. And as I mentioned last week, there's no better person to go to than Jesus to ask life's questions. Can you all say amen? It is. He's, he is the best. But what comes out of this and it was definitely not with the Pharisees from last week. But what comes out of this, Jesus seems to be digging to see if the inquirer is a seeker or not. In other words, really seeking the deep things of God. Or is he just needing head knowledge, trying to, to make a notch on his Bible that he has asked the right question and he knows he's got the ticket to heaven. And so the word again, A, of our ABCs is asking. He's asking the question uh, there and seeking, you know, if, if, if there's something going on, Jesus is, I believe, in his heart, something real. Now, let me mention when I was a young lad, before I really experienced Christ, I remember growing up in church like many of you have, but I had not really experienced the power of God. And, um, uh, I had a mentor, I really looked up to him, and he told me one time that anytime you had difficulties, problems, you know, in certain situations, that there would be an inner voice, just the inner, and my name, most of you know, Eddie, Pastor Eddie, there'd be an inner Eddie that just kind of can just fight the Goliaths. And I got into a bad situation one time, and I remember looking inside to find this inner Eddie and it sure wasn't there. <laughs> I mean, it, it was a failure. There, there was no, there was nothing there. And because I had never put any strength in the inner eddy, I never put any force in the inner eddy. I put, never sought the inner eddy. I, I just, just used it like magic. There was no inner eddy. I just want you to know. So from that day on, I, in a way, began to seek the, the deeper things of life. I, if I face problems and situations and difficulties, as we all do, I wanted to know who my answer was and, and what inner voice. And I have learned over the years, as probably all of you have, it's not an inner eddy. It's an inner Jesus. Amen? It's Jesus coming in, something outside coming inside of me and changing my life. The B of our ABCs today, the fella seems to be wanting an answer about behavior. That'll be the B of our ABCs. You see, because Jesus picks up, you know, in that day and age, especially, you know, he's rich, he's young, he's a ruler. And, and Jesus is the son of God. He knows is where he is, right? You know, so Jesus says to him first, he says, you know, why are you even calling me good? You know, you know, nobody's good, but God, was he not making just even a statement there? You know, because we know that Jesus is God. And then he says, well, you know the commandments. And he just gives him uh, an answer about behavior. 
You know, don't lie, don't steal, don't cheat, don't do any of those kind of things, you know, and don't commit adultery, you know. And then the young lad or young man looks at Jesus and he said, I've kept all these since I was a, a boy. And I love this. And you'd almost miss this if you weren't really looking at it. It says Jesus looked at him and loved him and loved him. So now Jesus is looking in his soul. And the man, I assume, is looking right back at Jesus. He would even know the color of Jesus' eyes. Wouldn't you like to know that? I believe Jesus is looking at you today and wanting to know if you are a seeker or just an asker. You see, because a seeker will tune in the right channel. Years ago, I had Sirius radio in my, my Dodge that y'all bought for me. Do y'all remember that? You bought that beautiful car. I ran it over 300,000 miles. I gave it to my son, and he put another 75,000 miles on that thing. Wow. But I had Sirius radio on that. And uh, I loved it because even in the summertime, I could listen to uh, reports on collegiate sports, especially football, that you can't pick up on the FM radio. And then I could, on Sirius Radio, I could just tune in and, and pick up uh, some of the great uh, pop singers of days gone by. Songs like, L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. V is very, very extraordinary. Who is that? Who is that? Nat King Cole. There's at least one person my age up here. Amen. Uh-huh. And then I could turn the tune over this way and tune it in. Ken, help me out. I tune it over here, and it would be doom, despair, and agony on me, deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Doom, despair, and agony on me. I would spit, but I'm not going to. Save your wife right here. <laughs> he didn't know I was going to do that. I should have put my mask on. I'm sorry, Jim. <laughs> and then I could tune it over to songs like the choir just sang and worship as I drove down the highway. All that took time. Jesus is looking at you. Looking at you and wanting to know, are you willing to spend time Seeking, seeking him. Jesus loved the man, and he doesn't give him a commandment. This is great. That would be a good C of the ABCs to wrap it up, wouldn't it? He doesn't do that. He gives him another C. He gives him the cross. He looks in his soul, and he said, you, what you need to do is sell all you have and come follow me. Now, when you read that in the Bible, most of us just say, oh, the Lord wants us to sell all we have and go follow him. No, 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 no. He was speaking to that man. And my challenge for you this week is, what is he speaking to you? What is it that you need to give to him? What is it that fills you up? And if you give that to him, then you're open and empty and he can fill you at this same time, are you a seeker or just someone asking random questions? You know, I found a passage of Scripture. I want you to turn with me quickly in your Bibles, your pew Bibles, if you would like to. The little red Bibles, that's the one I have here. The Gospel of Luke over to your right, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Gospel of Luke chapter 12. Listen to the words of our Savior here. He's teaching a parable. Luke chapter 12. Starting with verse 16, just a few verses. Jesus then told a parable. He said, the land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I'll do this. I'll put down my barns and I'll build up larger barns. And then I'll store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, 
You have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. Word of God for the people of God. Are you rich toward God? Do you see the Lord? Do you see the Lord? You know, I've mentioned a couple times in this service already the importance of the Stephen ministry. We have another ministry that's growing by leaps and bounds. It's an older ministry, but it's, it's really growing in the church. It was postponed because of COVID, but it's picking back up again slowly. And it's called the uh, Emmaus Gatherings. And if you've never been on an Emmaus walk, I would encourage you to start praying about that. You'll hear a lot more about it because we have a group that's growing, leading that in the church. And as I was preparing the sermon this week, one of the songs that we would sing when I went on those walks, and sometimes I've preached on those walks and been a part of them. I, they've been, they're amazing. I thought fit this perfectly. So I had to look up the lyrics, and I'm not going to sing it because it's a cappella, but I do want to read one of the song's verses to you. Have you ever been to the ocean, felt the white foam at your feet, felt the endless thunder in motion? Then I say, you have seen Jesus, my Lord. Have you seen Jesus, my Lord? He's here in plain view. Take a look, open your eyes, and he will teach life to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to even see the color of your eyes to gaze upon you, to not give up. Our questions to our Lord about our individual life. What must I do, Jesus, to inherit eternal life? And Jesus, he's looking right into your soul, eye to eye. The light of the body is in the eye, eye to eye. He sees what's in you. What is he saying to you? We know that you have to believe. We know that you have to trust. But is there anything in your life that is your God, your idol, that you need to give up so that he can fill you completely? Oh, friends, gaze into his eyes and see what color they are. <laughs> And may all of God's people say, amen. I got a feeling next week people are going to say, well, his eyes are this color. His eyes are this color. I'm wondering if they're just a reflection of your own eyes. Let's all stand together. And as we have our closing hymn, as we mention each week, the altar is open again. You can come and kneel for a moment in prayer, or you can just make the place where you're standing a place of commitment under the Lord Jesus Christ. Miss June? If you will join me for our hymn of benediction, if you'd like to use your hymnals, it is on page 468, and we'll be singing both verses of Dear Jesus in Whose Life I See.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you this day at the end of our service. We thank you for what you have given to us and continue to give to us. Lord, teach us by the power of the Holy Spirit to love you with our whole heart, mind, and strength. Increase our faith. May we trust you with everything in us and not just offer our intellectual agreement with your truth. Help us, Lord, in all we say and do. And may each one of us have gleaned something from the message this morning that will help us to grow that much further. Be with each one of us. Take us safely home and bring us safely back and go with each one of us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated for our postlude today. That is a wonderful biblical spiritual blessing you've received from our choir as we extinguish our candles now, symbolizing taking our faith to the world. Our postlude is titled, You Are the Seed. May you rise and turn and wave at your neighbor. We'll see you next Sunday morning. <laughs>